I want to talk about capturing decisions. How do we capture decisions in a way that isn't ephemeral, right? So a lot of times we'll make a decision by email or we'll discuss something. And nowadays the cool way to do it is on Slack, right? Or there are other ways you can do that. And you put it somewhere uh, and that, that decision is ephemeral. And all the pros and cons of why you made that decision kind of go away with that ephemeral, like I quit and I lost my mailbox, right? And nobody on that team was on that original decision, so nobody's got it in their email. So what we're gonna talk about is architectural decision records. And these don't have to be for software architecture. You can use them for program, for anything else. They are a way to capture a decision. Uh, we use them in the technical world. Um, and uh, the location of it will matter sometimes in the technical world. We try and get it as close to the implementation of a system or program. When you do it in other things like an MBA, like some kind of program rollout, or you're thinking of creating some new marketing program or whatever it would be, uh, it would go near that marketing program. Why did we make these decisions? How did we structure this? Right. So this ADR really exists for the future. We know what we're going to do now. We made this decision. We're going to build this thing out. We've talked about it. We'll use the ADR for a short period of time because uh, it'll capture the decision. We'll talk about what we capture. It Some future version of you, six months or a year from now, you'll be like looking at something, trying to figure out why this doesn't work or why you're thinking of making a change usually. And it was what will break if we make this change? And what we want to know is why we did it. We just want to remember so that if we make that change, we don't break it. We also have that thing with new team members, right? If you have somebody new on the team and everything's in an ephemeral way, they have no idea why a decision was made. And so architectural decision records can reduce your training costs and they can lower your risk. And the same thing is for future teams. If you trade this, pro this program, software development or whatever, off to another team, then that future team needs to understand why decisions were made, or they're gonna be afraid to change it, or they'll change it in ways that cause major problems. So let's talk about the fields that we capture in an ADR real quick. And there's a bunch of templates that have different fields, but I captured the ones that I've used before and we're on most of these. One is the issue itself. What is the problem description, right? The second is what's the status of this ADR? Is it a draft? Is it uh, approved? Is it in progress, right? And so you'll end up with a bunch of these ADRs stored in some directory somewhere. It's nice to know what their current status is. Uh, what are the alternatives? So you have the problem issue and then you have the alternatives. And those would be what are the different options that you could take that would solve this problem, that would help this issue? And they have to be viable, right? You can't just pick random ones. You got to pick ones that actually make sense. And then we talk about the decision. So we had a bunch of alternatives and then we chose one of those. And then we talk about what the impact or the implications were. Are there side effects? Does it cause people problems? Is there a technical issue? Do other teams need to be involved? Does it mean we can't expand past a certain point? Was this a little more costly so we could do something? Did we make this decision because it was dramatically cheaper, but it caused us not to be able to do certain other things in the future unless we redesigned it? Those are the things to capture here. And then you have related decisions. So a lot of times, if you're working on a major program, whether that's a software program or it's some other kind of program, <clears throat> you have a series of decisions that kind of plug into each other. And so the question is, what are those other decisions or what other previous or following decisions are impacted or related to this? Oh, we're going to do data this way. This means we're going to do compute this way. We're going to do uh, marketing program outreach this way. And that means these other things that we're doing, uh, staffing and other programs or ADRs we might need to do uh, would go a different way. And then I like diagrams. I think most people are visual thinkers. If there's anything you can do that kind of gives you an option, it tells you how this is going to go together. I like a diagram. I think they're cool. A lot of the ADRs don't have it because the way they store them, it's hard to keep a diagram near them. <clears throat> so that could be an issue. Uh, and sometimes in the alternatives, I'll do diagrams. <clears throat> We're thinking of routing data this way through these systems, these two different ways. And a picture is way easier for people. People are lazy. They won't read a lot of stuff, but they will stare at the pictures and totally pick it apart. The other area... Uh, that I think uh, gets added to ADRs. And we did this at a large bank in Northern Virginia, but that's not in all the ADRs. I think the RACI matrix should be added to this. It's basically the people that were involved in the decision and who was told about the decision when it was done. Hey, we made this decision and we notified these other teams or we noted the, no, notified the program or the next level up, right? And so <clears throat> I like this. I think the person who's responsible creates the ADR uh, some other teams or people were consulted in the decision, the decision was made, and then people were informed. And I, I really like this part, and uh, it feels like something you should add. 
and it should be as simple as possible. The goal of these is sort of like Agile, as low process as possible, uh, just enough so that this thing has value in the future. Uh, and so, like I said before, the point of this is to remember why decisions were made and not have to relearn the caveats and the complications and where the risks are, right? So who benefits from this? I talked a little bit about this before. You in the future. Future you is going to be really grateful for you doing this. Um, also, if you had new team members and you got to bring them up to speed, the ADRs are a great way. Decision records are a great way for them to learn why something's structured the way it is. Uh, the third one here, I actually got this from another talk, and it's ownership changes. Projects will change owner. Uh, I'm actually on a project right now where we're thinking of taking ownership of some code from another team. They're going to walk away from it. We still want to use it. I really wish they had ADRs that described why they did certain decisions. We're going to get nothing but code and no understanding of why it's structured the way it is. So how should they be stored? This is probably the other big area. Uh, they really need to be stored as close as possible to the things that are impacted by the decision. And we would like it to be in a place that is either searchable or findable easy. So if this is source code we're doing, we're making architecture decisions in a software project, uh, you might put it in Git in, or in the repository, right? In a document area and all the ADRs for that project for the reason you did something would go there. If it's a higher level than that, you got to find some more commonplace. A lot of times I've done this, seen this done uh, on a wiki. You'll have some internal technical wiki and there'll be an ADR section for the architecture team or for uh, program management, right? And so in those cases, uh, you might use wiki markup. I really like wikis because they're easy for images. They all support embedded images. When you do uh, ADRs with your source code, you typically use markdown and I got some links below that show it. Uh, and the markdown is a little more complicated to manage the images, right? Uh, and then some places I've seen, we, we do this with SharePoint. Uh, and that's because they don't have, they don't believe in wikis, so they have SharePoint. I don't like that as much. I find it a little harder to find stuff, but if you, that's all you got, it makes sense, right? So the last part of this is where can you go for more help from what I just said? And I think that's, here's some templates. There's actually an ADR.org or something. And, um, there's uh, Markdown ADRs that are on GitHub. This Joel Parker Anderson site is really good. Uh, there's some links on some of these sites to a business case ADR, so it's not just technical. And then there were two good articles by what I would consider you know, pretty agile companies, uh, GitHub and Spotify. Both had articles on how they use ADRs to help with their process. So that's all I've got. I hope this is uh, you'll find this useful and that you will go out to those link sites that you can find on the blog article, it'll be linked in the video, and that, that will help you figure out a way to capture an ADR and go try it.